Questions 57 to 60. A little bit of physics, but mostly math. So we're given some equations, and uh, we have K times the weight. Weight is given by mg, mass times gravity. And we're given a couple of more equations, and we're also told that the mass and C, so M and C, can be regarded as constants. Okay, so question 57. Consider jumps on Earth and the Moon. A person will leave the ground if. So, looking at the diagram that's been provided to us, J is leaving the ground. <laughs> J uh, definitely means that the person would have left the ground because they're standing um, straight. And so, if J is a positive number, uh, that means uh, the person has left the ground. So, we want J to be a positive number. So obviously if ke is equal to 1, then that means uh, this is going to be 0 and j is 0 and so the person has not left the ground. If ke is any number above 1, that means that this is going to be a positive number and therefore je will be positive and then the person would have left the ground. So that means um, that answer choice b is correct. And also note that this is the same for JM. JM also KM, uh, K for the, for the moon, would have to be some value above the number 1 in order for this to be a positive number. And so J would have increased. So that means that, uh, again, this reaffirms that answer choice B must be correct. The next question, 58, the person jumps 11 times as high on the moon with equal force. So now we have a third component that is constant. We already saw, said uh, mass and C are constant. Now we have force, which is going to be, we're going to be able to take that as being constant. So how large is the force by the person jumping? Okay, 11 times as high. So let's convert that into some some num some value. So the J in the moon is now 11 times the J that would be on the earth because that's 11 times as high as would be on the earth. So then uh, let's cross this J out, uh, J moon away. And now I'm going to refer to it as 11 J E because it's because the the height on the moon is 11 times the height that would have been on earth so that's the that's the height okay so then um, i'm looking at this equation i'm going to completely ignore this part because i'm going to try to convert everything in terms of earth so i'm going to completely ignore this part and i'm going to focus on what's happening in terms of earth and so what I would have here is one unknown here, I have a second unknown, and then I have a third unknown here, so <laughs> that's bad news. We have to be able to uh, have either one unknown, or if we have two unknowns, we need two equations, and we would have to use simultaneous equations. Um, we have to start to simplify. So I see that JE does relate to KE here, and this is a common thing, uh, I mean, common. You might have one to five questions on the exam where you may have to uh, use some substitutions. And so I do see that JE is related to KE and that that will help simplify things. And I also will get C and I will be able to cross that out on both sides. So there's great benefit for me to convert here. So I'm going to write 11 and then we have C times KE minus 1, so I'm substituting for JE, and all of that is equal to uh, to this. So I'm not going to rewrite it, uh, you know, especially in the exam. As long as you write clearly, you will be able to uh, save steps uh, like this. So now I know that this is equal to that, and so I can do things like I can divide both sides by C, and dividing both sides by C allows me to cancel that. And then I would end up with 11 KE, and then 11 goes in there, so I have minus 11, and uh, that's equal to uh, 6 KE.
e minus 1. Okay, so I'll add 11 to both sides, and th then I'll end up with 10 here, and I'll subtract 6ke from both sides, and then I'll end up with 5ke there. So I'll have 5ke is equal to 10, and so therefore ke is equal to 2. And so I know that ke, which is this factor, right here. Remember that we were told that this is k times their weight. So this is ke, which is on earth, times the weight uh, mg. And so in looking at the answer choices, uh, we see that 58c gives us twice the person's weight on earth. So that's e for earth. So um, I didn't write it all out like they did with a capital and all that. But um, uh, you can see that uh, clearly. So that means that 58, the answer is C. 59. So consider a person who jumps on the moon using a force six times their weight. Okay, so we're back to this equation. The force six times their weight on the moon. And so if this is six times... However, gravity on the moon is one-sixth. So if this is six times, uh, k is six times, and the gravity is one-sixth, that means in terms of Earth, the weight is only equal to that of Earth. So um, in other words, therefore, we have the force um, is equal to mg Earth, where k e is equal to 1. And of course, Newton's second law would suggest that if there is no net force, therefore there's inertia. And that means the person's either not moving or is continuing to move at constant velocity. So if this is a person that is uh, on, the, on the earth, it means that if they can only muster a force which is equivalent to their weight, then they are not there is no net force. There is no force above the weight. They need a force somehow above the weight in order to uh, counteract gravity. And so if they are only exactly equal to their weight, that means the person will not leave the ground. There is no net force according to Newton's second law. Okay, so question 60. So for question 60, we are looking at another planet. <laughs> So a third planet, and it has one-third of the gravity of Earth. So its gravity is intermediate between that of Earth and the Moon. So if we were to write this down, we would say that because the Moon is one-sixth, that will be the lowest value for gravity. That means if you were going to jump on the Moon, you're going to be able to jump the highest on the Moon because it has the least gravity. So let's just write that down. So J on the Moon, because that's the distance that you'll be able to jump, is going to be greater than, say, for example, J on the planet. Now this has nothing to do with physics. So this is just a matter of reasoning to get to this stage, and now it's just a matter of math. Because clearly, if you, and I'm writing J M over JE because this is among the answer choices. And so if you had JM, which is the highest number, over JE, which is the lowest number, that means that that fraction would be greater than, for example, uh, JM over J of the planet. And that's because if you have a smaller number in the denominator, it makes the overall number bigger. And this is the biggest number. So this number has to be greater than this number. Of course, if you wanted to, you can put actual values in there. But, uh, you, you know, that would not be an efficient use of your time, let's say. <laughs> but anyway, you can, tr you can try it. The point is, though, is that JM over JE is going to be greater than J of the moon over the J of the planet. And that means the answer has to be B. And so uh, in the book, uh, Gamsat Math, if you're dealing with fractions and how to compare fractions, section 1.4, and then physics 2.1 to 2.5 for force, weight, and gravity.